Hello and welcome to the video. I'm super excited. Right now we're on an actual farm. I think it's a pretty big farm for Switzerland. So uh, we're gonna see the place. I'm pretty sure it's a dairy. They might do other things as well. Hopefully we learn something. I'm uh, super excited. So enjoy. So to start off, we move into the milking area. It used to be a parlor setup, and now they have a D-Laval robot, and uh, they're currently milking 55 cows. The robot can handle up to 70, which is pretty standard for all milking robots. And they've had this D-Laval robot for two years now, and they said they really liked it. And like most robotic milking setups, every uh, cow in the milking barn has a collar, kind of like a Fitbit to track their activity levels and how often they're coming to the, the milking robot or the milk machine, how healthy they are, keeping track of them, making sure everything's going good. I do apologize if anything did get lost in translation. My family members were doing their best and I was trying my best to uh, keep it basic when I was asking questions. So super grateful I had my family there to help, uh, help translate. But anyways, so some of you might be wondering what the herd consists of here, especially on a modern farm like this one. It sounds like originally back when their father ran the farm, it was all brown Swiss. It was very traditional. And uh, now they have a mixed herd where out of the 55 cows, 10 of them are brown Swiss. And then the rest are Holstein, a mixture of red and white Holstein and black and white Holstein. And talking to the, the brother that is on the cattle side of the operation and enjoys all that, I asked him what his favorite breed was, and he said that he is a fan of the Holsteins. He says they're a lot easier to work with when it comes to the robots. They're a lot less stubborn. They're more relaxed around the robots. They're easier to get into that pattern, a lot easier to work with and deal with, and a lot lot better for that system and I think they they produce just as well if not a little better so he said he was a fan of the Holsteins which obviously we were super excited to hear but they're still keeping some of that tradition keeping some of those brown Swiss around which I think is a beautiful thing as well so like a lot of robot milking setups you got to have something to incentivize the cow to, to come to the robot every 8 to 12 hours. What they're offering at the robot, from my understanding, it's a molasses pellet and then uh, an egg white as a protein source. I believe that's uh, what I was understanding. They're getting some type of protein and they're getting some type of uh, sweet treat at the robot, which is really cool. And like I was saying, they have it set where she can get milked if she comes there eight hours afterwards and they don't want her there any later than 12 hours. So she's getting milked at least twice a day, eight to 12 hours apart. And some cows do come to the robot earlier and the robot knows that because they have their collar on. So they just let them through the other side and they don't get their pellet. That way cows aren't getting overfed or over milked and they're, they're keeping a more uniform milking routine. So then we started talking milk quality and production numbers, and it sounds like they do get a bit of a bonus if they have a higher protein, a higher fat percentage, and, and a better somatic cell count. Obviously, their units are a little different than ours, so it was hard to convert all, all those numbers over, but looking at the place, I think they, they probably had some pretty good numbers. They kept everything really clean and really nice, and, and you could tell they really cared for their cattle and they really cared for their farm. So then I asked the question, what's your herd average per day? How much milk are you producing every day? And the herd average, if I converted it over right, is about 62 pounds per cow per day, which I thought was pretty good considering their nutrition that they had to follow in order to fit their creamery standard. And it sounds like the milk that they're producing is getting used to make cheese. And apparently they can't use any silages when it comes to feeding their cows if they want to meet the standards of the creamery. I suppose it, it makes a different tasting cheese or something like that. We can talk about their diet a little more when we get over to the manger. And now looking into the free stall, you can kind of see a new addition here on the left side of the screen. And it sounds like a year ago they added that on and then they were able to add 20 more cows to the herd, bumping them up into the 50s. And then at the same time, they also upgraded their 
their feeding machine, their TMR, and we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. And they also have a robot scraper to help with the manure. And it sounds like they're, they're liking that. Every once in a while, a cow might, might bump it or throw it off of its, its track and interfere with it. But other than that, they said they really like it. So now let's move over to the other side of the barn here. Let's move over to the manger. We can talk a little bit more about uh, what the cows are eating, what their diet's looking like. So as you can see, as we're walking over here, there's a lot of overhead storage. You can see there's those big bulk bins for their, I'm guessing their molasses pellets and some of that egg white, that protein mix, whatever they're using for a protein source. There also is a lot of dry hay storage. So I kind of hinted at it earlier, their cow's diet is primarily dry hay. And I think that is to meet the standards of their creamery. I suppose it probably affects the way the cheese tastes and, and the type of milk. In my eyes, for a primarily dry hay diet, and they're still getting 60 plus pounds per day per animal, that's, uh, that's looking pretty good in my opinion. So on either side of the alleyway here, they have uh, feed storage. He has a, a Lully overhead crane system that is dumping into a Lully uh, robot TMR or feed wagon, whatever you'd like to call it, which it, it's really cool to see all the automation on this farm. Looking at the hay storage, he's got three separate bins of, of loose dry hay, which I think has to do with the quality of the hay or which, you know, which cutting of the year it was from. He's shooting for at least four cuttings a year. And it sounds like the first cutting of the year is the most important. It's the one that has the most nutritional value and the one that he looks forward to the most. It's cool to see that they're shooting for a, a higher amount of cuttings. They're kind of following that modern pattern. Get some a higher quality feed, cut more often throughout the year. I can't get over those crane systems they had in Switzerland. Those are super cool. I haven't seen anything like that in any of the barns I've been to in the U.S. Super unique and it looks like it's working well for them. Moving outside, I just can't get over how beautiful the landscape is, especially on this farm. They keep everything super clean. And now we get to look at the machinery side of things, which I'm pretty excited about. We first get to look at their biggest tractor on the farm. It's a JCB. They use it to haul liquid manure around and I believe apply it as well. It's got a really cool paint job on it. I don't know if you can buy it like that with the Alps on the hood and the black hood and then the Alps on the tanker as well. I'm assuming that's custom, but talk about a beautiful rig. Now don't be fooled by this JCB. These guys love John Deere tractors. Moving over to this new shop that was just finished within the past year here. They got a five series John Deere there that looks like its main job is, is raking or merging hay. Some of the, the lighter duty jobs on the farm. They got another beautiful manure tanker there in the background. I'll throw up a picture of that. It sounds like the other brother on the farm, he's more into the equipment and he puts a lot of effort into keeping their equipment nice and keeping it looking sharp. And they did a custom paint job on this tanker. Just look at that. Just look at the artwork. I can't get over how beautiful that is. And this one has the application booms on it. And it sounds like that's becoming more common over there as there's more restrictions for applying manure at certain times of the year, certain amounts and application types. Moving on to more John Deere's. These guys love their John Deere's. They got two almost brand new looking six series John Deere's, which seem to be the two main workhorses on the farm. Right now during the winter, they have custom plowing jobs, custom plowing contracts they got to keep up with. So they got big blades on the front and they got big salt spreaders in the back on the three point as well. And during the summer, these two are hauling hay and other materials around the farm. Now, I wasn't kidding when I said these guys really like their John Deere. They even painted their telehandler and their forklift John Deere green to fit the theme. They also got a little John Deere mower there as well. Now, some of you might be wondering, since they love John Deere so much, why didn't they buy an 8 Series John Deere instead of that JCB? And I asked that same question. The reason they went with the JCB is because they could go up in horsepower and still stay narrow enough to make it down the roads and fit into tight spots and, and travel from farm to farm. And now the last John Deere here tucked away in the shed is an old 3120 restored. My, is that a beautiful tractor. These guys really take pride in 
upkeeping their equipment and making sure everything's nice. Before we move on to the next farm, I wanted to let you guys know that they do more than just milk cows here. They also raise chickens. They raise a lot of small grains to sell, and they also do some custom farming along with some logging as well. They're pretty diversified, a really nice new modern family farm. They definitely got something to be proud of. Super happy, super grateful that they were able to give us a tour today. Now moving on to another farm. This was a shorter visit later in the evening, but it was more sentimental for me. This was one of the farms I got to see the last time I was here in Switzerland. This farm's a bit more old school. He milks 20 cows. His herd is pretty much all brown Swiss. It's on the more traditional side for a Swiss dairy. I believe that he takes his herd up into the mountains to graze during the summer, which is really cool. This small farm, he really prides himself on his genetics of his herd, which was really cool to see. We, he was showing me his genetic books. He does a lot of AI breeding from what it looks like. And he showed me a couple of the bulls that were in that magazine from the US that he's used or thought about using, which was really cool. There was this one brown Swiss that had this real speckled white look on its back and its face. That was super interesting. You could tell this guy, he put a lot of effort into each and every individual cow and trying to shape them to be the best they could be and produce the most they could for him. And it looked like his nutrition was very similar to that modern farm we went to. A lot of dry hay, very simple diets. Very grateful that he let us come and check out his operation again. He was in the middle of milking, so we didn't want to bother him too much, but it was still really good to see him. Really happy he allowed us to come in and, and check out his barn again. All in all, I had a really wonderful time today. It was awesome getting to tour those two farms. I hope that all of you had a blast watching. I know I had a blast being there. Thank you all for sticking around to the end. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave those down below. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, if you wanna see more of us or more from this trip, check out our social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all at Garrock Farms. And if you ever wanted to send us something, we do have a P.O. box as well. But that's going to wrap up the video. Thank you to both of those farms for letting us tour their place. And thank you to every single one of you watching the video.